food crisis, oil crisis, everything. We need to build a new civilization where we won't have that. It's not money obsession, it's about human beings. Never ever have we been in such a need for social entrepreneurs to work in partnership with governments, NGOs, and civil society at large. Having access to the World Economic <laughs> Forum for any social entrepreneur gives us a greater chance to scale our impact. We're able to connect with people from all over the world who are focused on the same issues. It's all about reaching more people and affecting change. We have enough technology, we have enough ability, enough innovative capacity to create the world that you feel comfortable with, you feel proud of creating that world. President Zuma, Vice President Amisa Arthur, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have just heard how much important youth is and how much job creation is integrating the youth into the job market. So this is exactly what social entrepreneurs are doing. And um, it gives me great pleasure to present to you now the 2015 Social Entrepreneur of the Year awardees for Africa. Today, social entrepreneurship concepts are rapidly becoming mainstream. And most people understand that these visionaries are first and foremost entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs who possess deep market knowledge and business acumen. Entrepreneurs who combine passion with purpose and devote their talents to creating a more just and inclusive world for all. I was delighted to see that a number of social, uh, South African public figures attended the gala dinner we held for the African Social Entrepreneurs of the Year at the start of this summit on Tuesday. I take this as an important signal of the growing interest in social entrepreneurs' proven cost-effective models in the highest levels of government. I would like now to thank our partner, the Mozepe Foundation, for their commitment to fostering social entrepreneurship in Africa. And now I'd like to ask each of you to join me on stage, on stage when I call their name. Christy Peacock, Sidai, Africa, Kenya. <laughs> Livestock play a critical role across rural Africa and are the main source of income for millions of herders. Without proper training, vaccines, and feeds, livestock owners often struggle to keep their animals healthy and productive. Sensing an opportunity to fulfill livestock's potential as a tool to lift people out of poverty, Christy Peacock turned three decades of expertise in livestock management into a thriving social business in Kenya. Sidai's steadily growing network of 100 outlets and 350 stock agents provide regular trainings and sell high-quality, affordable products to over 80 families across the country. Sharanji Chan, Math Center Incorporating Sciences, South Africa. A math and science teacher for over 19 years in the UK, Sharanji Chan took on the challenge of improving math and science education in South Africa back in 1995. Since then, she has achieved remarkable success. Math Center puts teachers at the core of its model. Its programs improve educators' qualifications to teach math, science, and technology, while it systematically monitors students' progression in those subjects. Math Center has served over 400 students in South Africa through a network of more than 9,000 teachers. Over 50% of the students in Math Center programs achieve levels three to six, which means their performance equals that in developed nations. Catherine Lucy, Solar Sister, Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria. <laughs> C. 
70% of the energy poor are women and girls who live with the worst consequences of life without electricity. They have to collect firewood, expose themselves to indoor air pollution and more. Solar Sister combines the breakthrough potential of clean energy technologies with a network of grassroots women entrepreneurs. It recruits, trains and mentors women to build sustainable businesses selling portable solar lamps, mobile phone chargers and clean cook stoves in Uganda, Tanzania and Nigeria. Solar Sister entrepreneurs use their social networks to provide the most effective distribution channel to rural and hard to reach customers. John Sargent and Ernest Darko, co-founders of Broadreach Healthcare South Africa. <clears throat> Broadreach Healthcare has worked on developing some of Africa's most groundbreaking, innovative and successful healthcare programs, including Africa's first national HIV treatment program, which has already provided treatment support for over 500,000 patients. Broadreach data analytics and modeling techniques have improved processes and quality care across 1,000 health facilities, reaching 20% of South Africa's population who receive treatments for HIV, TB, and maternal and infant care. This concludes our award ceremony. I would like to ask President Zuma and Vice President Amisar Arthur and Klaus Schwab to join the social entrepreneurs for a group photo. <laughs>